Welcome to See You in the Lobby March Madness Edition. We're we back. have another amazing guest, dear friend of mine, Mo Curry. What's up? What's up? What's up, y'all? What's up, Riz? Hey, Matt. Excited to have you on the chat, March Madness, and and all that good stuff. Um, it was fun for me this morning, going just googling you and going through your Wikipedia and all your Duke stuff again. It's like that just oh, reminder God. how not, like. I know you were nice. I've watched you play since you was at you were at Bullets, but I'm like, dang, like Mo is super, super nice. But it, <laughs> you know that that was many moons ago. But just want to chat like all things March Madness. You were fortunate to go a couple Final Fours. Um, I mean, well, yeah. three, but but mm-hmm. one was your red shirt year, right? Yep. Um, but so let's let's talk March Madness. What are some of your your great fond memories? Your favorite Final Four? Your first final, let's talk your first final four. What was it like getting to your first one? Felt like it was the norm to make it to the final four because we made it to the final four like every year, but it was always an exciting like time of the year. You got so much free gear and shoes and bags. That was always the best part as a kid, but then you're traveling somewhere and then you're playing the best of the best. So it was just high stakes, one and done, best time of the year. And Elena was still on the squad. Yeah, that was her senior year? Yeah, I think our first year we were in San Antonio, maybe. We lost to Oklahoma. Uh, yeah, I, I think remember. it was Oklahoma. It could have yeah. been Oklahoma. Yeah. They um, had Stacy. Oh, Stacy Dales was there then? Yeah, Stacy Dales. Yeah, Stacy Dales. Oh, wow. Dang. Yeah, Stacy yep. Dales. Whoever is watching this does not know Stacy Dales. She used to get buckets in college. Yeah, she was uh, a beast in college. Yeah, yeah she's, for sure. I mean, that, like, because Matt and I have been talking even this year's tournament, it's such a wide open field and not mm, necessarily. <laughs> well, well was South Carolina and everybody exception. else. Yeah, it's like okay, South Carolina okay, and everybody okay, else. Okay. And there, it's parody, but not like parody when we were playing. Like I'll die on the hill that it was the talent. That, like you had five players on the top 15 teams that were like league bound, like starting starting fives. Now it's much different. But should we move on to your next next final four? If I could remember where it was, we could. <laughs> I'm not sure. I went to like four of them. I don't know. Dang, that's like a luxury. You just went to so many Final Fours. You don't. You don't. Rem- <laughs> you don't remember. Them. All right. What's What's your fondest March Madness memory? Then, like fondest March Madness. I always like when the uh, the police or like security drives you through the city. Your bus gets to like go through all the lights. It doesn't have to stop. <laughs> It's not in traffic. Wait, you what? get like a police <laughs> escort to the arena every time you go to a game. I always thought that was cool. <laughs> I, I don't think I knew that that was a thing. Oh yeah, you get the police escort. You feel like royalty. <laughs> You're like, oh, this is nice. What kind of a bus are you yeah. on? You're on the like the bus? like the tour big big tour buses. Oh shit. Like the charter buses. That sounds amazing. Yeah. yeah. You like zoom, you zoom through. That was always cool. And then I guess the games. I <laughs> also the games. My family, <laughs> my family would come to the Final Fours. It was nice to have them there. But I think all the perks around the Final Four was always my favorite. And, but I think it's so interesting just because you went to so many Final Fours. Like, and to your point, it was that was the norm. For you guys, it wasn't Final Four or bust. It was championship or bust because you knew every year you guys were going to you were gonna get there. So it's just interesting because we talked to Chelsea Gray, too. And for her, for her, it was like Final Four or bust or like Elite Eight, Elite Eight or bust. So it's just, <laughs> then, it, then it became tournament or bust. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh man okay well so matt and i always well i always laugh with matt i'm like man i have a lot of like close duke people in my life and i'll, I'll alarm him out back acc days i know you guys don't consider us our, your rivals but it was definitely a thing for us maryland folks so we got to talk about the, the elephant in the room that 2006 mm-hmm. national <laughs> championship game I've, I've heard about it do you want to remind everyone what happened <laughs> the 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 what always sticks out to me and if you go to the arena and press the button it's like can two sophomores two freshmen and a junior win the national championship like sorry mo but from i'll just go back to the i mean for me i was a bright-eyed freshman that knew nothing about it was just like Christy and I came in thinking, yeah, this is so that this is what you're supposed to do. We never got mm-hmm. back to another one. So like it shows how hard it is. But for me, playing in the national championship against Duke, a team that one recruited me super hard and it came down to between Maryland and Duke. Mo, who was an idol of mine, I've knew Mo since I was 14 years old, playing against her in the national championship game. It was just like it was really cool to be in that 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 moment outside of just playing the game, but just like the pieces that came together together. Like Mo was my assistant coach in AAU. 
watched her all four years. I had Mo's signature on a pair of shoes. Now I'm like playing against her in the national championship game. Um, and then like another friend of mine. So it was just, for me, it was, it was super, super I was cool. Say, how close were you guys like before this game? Were I knew you, Moses. I was thirteen. So you guys were like legit friends at this point. Were you were you texting each other in the lead up to this game, or was it like no. strictly no. game? It was yeah, game it was, mode. Yeah, it was it was game mode. And yeah. yeah, it was game mode. And then it, it being Mo's senior year, and then <laughs> I'll tell this part. So they they were they were kicking our ass the first half, and in early second half, we're at the free throw line. Okay. <laughs> one of my teammates, Jade Perry, she was a size fifteen in women massive feet and she had on the old pippins that say air on them the up tempos most feeling all good about herself because they're up by like 13 and she looks down at jade at the free throw line. she's like damn jade your feet so big they don't say air they say air. <laughs> <laughs> in the final in, board, in the championship, championship game, game joke mode pure joke yeah. mode but i mean it's hilarious obviously it didn't work out in your favor but <laughs> That was an iconic game. Like when every year around the tournament, I mean, I'm happy because they show they show that clip. But all right, what's your reliving of that moment, or have you gotten over it? <laughs> I, I'm I'm over it, but every time March Madness comes around, it's like I get the feeling again. It's just like it wasn't. That was my last, like you said, Rich, it was my senior year. We finally made it to the championship game. It was our first time actually in the championship game, and. I was actually happy to play Maryland. I think you guys beat UNC, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Because UNC had beat us that year twice. So it was like, okay, don't want to really, I mean, we'll play them, but I would rather not play them. So we saw Maryland, who I think we, I don't know what our record was during the season, but I'm- Y'all beat us three times. I'm pretty, pretty sure we probably beat y'all three times. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, okay, we're playing Maryland. Of course, it's going to be a fight, but like, I like our chances. Um, against Maryland. And we played a really, we played a good game. I heard your coach came in and like made up some story at halftime and told you guys that like we were in a locker room celebrating. Like we had won, <laughs> that, that, that's what she was, said. Coaches are wild. Which was not true. <laughs> which was absolutely not true. But then, you know, the second half, you guys went on a run. Shea Duran, well, Shea Duran went off in overtime, but then Christy Tolliver um, hit that shot over 6'7", Allison. I don't know what happened over there in the corner, but you know, it was a tough loss. And then back then, they used to have the WNBA draft the next day after the final four. It used four, to be the next don't day. Have anymore. So I had to go from losing the national championship and then go to the draft the next day and try to be happy. And it was just like, yes, I'm happy that I'm here at the WNBA draft, but I just lost the national championship last night. And so it was just like some weird That's terrible. mixed feelings where it's like, I wanted to be happy, but I hadn't like, you know, gotten over the championship game yet. Yeah, it used to be the next day. That is literally, how do you, how do you get there? <laughs> <laughs> right. They would have it, like, wherever the final four was, they would have it, you know, in the same city. Okay. Following, I guess, just, I mean, you know, a lot of basketball media is there, fans, et cetera. But, like, for the players, if you made it that far, it wasn't a really great feeling no, to be that there. Sounds, that sounds really sad, honestly. Like you, <laughs> were, just, you <laughs> no, have to just Matt, fake emotions. It was, sad. Yeah. it was sad. Not to add insult to but they, oh, they, the on loop, they kept showing like Mo on the bench, like in disbelief, just like twisting her dread. And it was, yeah, it was crazy. And then there was so much talk because Mo, senior, three time All American at that point. Yeah, I, I decided to stay. I yeah. had stayed, like I stayed my fifth year, where. Like I could have went to the league after four years. It was like all the stars were aligned to win the championship, and then we lost in overtime. But Mo, Mo but, didn't get the you know. shot. They still had a chance to tie it, tie it or win it, and yeah. Mo didn't get the last shot as a senior. Like that was a lot of talk too. It was like, mm. why wasn't the ball in Mo Curry's hand? She was mm. the the All American. All this, um, but no, that was that was that was a crazy game. Yeah, it's tough. I w I wish we had won. I'm like, I don't like the Terrapins. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I have terrible friends, but that's as far as it goes. Yeah, but like so far removed from it and, and like the Final Fours, and like you said, like Final Fours is what you guys did. I know for me personally, like for so long, there was like so much, I don't want to say regret because it's not the right word, but like miss, feeling of missed opportunities because mm -hmm. we had a Final Four team every single year I was at Maryland, but we only made it that one time. Like we didn't get back to the Final Four, it was Elite Eight every year. Um, mm -hmm. And always feeling like 
kind of like a, a failure in, 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 in some ways. Cause it's like, man, we had this team and we couldn't get back, but now like being so far removed from it and understanding like just how hard it is to win on any level, like I'll take yeah. it. So right. I say and all that you, to like, yeah. ask, like, do you feel like, all right, like we didn't get a championship, but I went to three final fours and that's a lot more than most can say. Yeah, it's, I mean, I'm proud to have like the success that we had at Duke while I was there. I know how tough it is to get there. Like you said, you guys went and won a championship and didn't go back afterwards. So just knowing, you know, the competition playing at a high level is challenging and making it to the final four is a big deal. You know, we have banners. Um, no, we don't. <laughs> Some schools, I mean, I don't know, but making it to the final four, making a tournament is a big deal for a lot of schools. So I just think, you know, you don't, you don't need to, if you don't win it all, it doesn't mean you weren't successful. There's still successes along the way. I was going to say too, Mo, when you're looking at, uh, even like this year's bracket, and you've been to a couple of Final Fours, you know what it takes. What are you looking for? Like what components in a team are you looking for to think that they've, they've got what it takes aside from just obviously they have a great record? It's just the grit. It's the dog. It's kind of like anybody can win one game. So it's who's ready to play, who shows up, who steps, who steps up at the right time. Because, you know, with talent spread across um, the country where – you know, South Carolina is very dominant. There are a few dominant schools, but outside of South Carolina, it could be anybody day. So it's like, who's ready? Who's who's clicking at the right time? Who has the momentum going into the tournament? And who's just going to leave it all out there on the floor? And that's what matters because it doesn't matter. You know, Duke wasn't ranked to start the season and we ended up with a three seed. So it's kind of like, what are you doing now? Doesn't matter what happened during the regular season. Six games. Those six games are like, the, that's all that matters right now. So who's going to leave it all, all out there and who's going to you know, survive in advance. I asked this to Chelsea too. Uh, do you take stock in how teams do in their conference tournament? The, that's like the direct practice run, it feels like. I think it helps. Like you don't want to go into the tournament like coming off losses or having a, a bad end to your regular season because that all plays into like the momentum. If you're playing well, things are clicking, you can just transition right into the tournament and hopefully continue, you know, that that play that you've had to end the season. Now, there are good teams like Stanford who – lost like the last two of their three games of the regular season they didn't win the Pac-12 championship so they're not playing well right now that doesn't mean that you know they can't turn it on once they get to the tournament but it's an advantage if you can just keep flowing um from end of the season well to kicking off the NCAA tournament the tournament is so much vibes like it doesn't, yeah. is, your, is your team clicking right this second literally yeah. yeah did you fill out your bracket yet I have not. I don't, I'm not going to fill out. A, we have a lot of brackets at work. Um, oh, little challenges, but you're going to fill out a gaming society <laughs> bracket, Mo. <laughs> All right. Well, who, who do you have as your final four? Just what teams you like? Obviously, South Carolina will be there. I, I want Stanford, to, but they have to get through Iowa, which is going to be tough for them if Caitlin is playing. You know how she plays. I think that'll be a good a good matchup to see. So either it'll either be Stanford or Iowa. In the final four, the other side so is hard. Is to call. The other side is really hard. I have ahead, Stanford, uh, LSU, UConn, and South Carolina, and I have LSU South Carolina championship. I mean, sorry, LSU Connecticut championship. Who do you have? South God, Carolina? Okay. Sorry, Are you fine? No, I'm not fine. I'm not <laughs> fine. I have South Carolina <laughs> UConn the championship. Sorry. Right. <laughs> That's a that's a fair one. I don't know. I don't LSU the way they got punished by yeah. South Carolina it made me lose a little hope in kind of what they were doing. But you know, Kim Mulkey is a great coach, and then Angel Reese has been balling all season. Mm. I got South Carolina winning it all, so yeah. that's just what it, <laughs> it comes really down to. Like it. <laughs> it doesn't I don't matter. see anybody beating them. Maryland gets a chance to get revenge, but I doubt that <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna try really hard. <laughs> I don't think you guys are going to beat them, but no. anything is possible in March, we, right? We don't but... either, so it's okay. <laughs> yeah, it's really I, don't, I, think, I love yeah. you, but... <laughs> I don't know how you beat yeah, South Carolina. I got Carolina. a repeat, a uh, South Carolina repeat happening this year. It just seems impossible, especially knowing that this team has already done it. It's yeah. like they weathered the storm all year of being like target on your back. You still go 32-0. and 0. I know they had a couple of close overtime pulls, but... That's going to happen. Like, and they mm-hmm. somehow managed to get better. Yeah. <laughs> than last year. Well, what do you guys think about, you know, how they often say sometimes it's good to lose a game just so you can figure out how to bounce back, how to recover. Since South Carolina hasn't 
lost a game this season, do you think that will be a disadvantage to, to them going into the tournament? I don't think so. Their experience, they have Dawn. Like, I just really think the culture that she's created at, at South Carolina, how she runs that program, like, they're going to be ready for, for any and everything. Even, even the w- wins they have, I'm sure she didn't let them get complacent. She's in the locker room like, all right, cool, we won. But yeah. we did this, this, and that. So with a team like South Carolina, I say no. Some other teams, absolutely. Like yeah, Indiana, for example, they have two or three losses. Three. I'm not a believer in them. I just don't think they have the experience. I think when the bright, bright lights are on, they're not going to know what to do. Yeah, I believe their first time uh, number one seed, them and Virginia Tech are both first time number one seeds in like their program history. So the lights are bright in the tournament and all eyes are on you. It's it's a high pressure, high stakes environment and you really got to just be able to show up. So I agree. South Carolina would be ready. They had to be so hyped when they saw that they were on the opposite side of the bracket yeah, from like, South please, Carolina. Please Literally going. the whole the whole time we have the bracket show on and I'm waiting for Maryland and I'm just like anything but the South Carolina Carolina region. Like anything <laughs> but that, anything that. And she heard me scream and she was upstairs as they revealed Maryland was a two seed in the South Carolina thing. I'm like, I was like, that, that doesn't sound good. I would have rather what? been a, a uh, five Duke seed somewhere Seattle else. If they make it. So I'll probably try to go up to Seattle. I'm in Portland now. So it'll be cool to go up to Seattle and check them out in the tournament if if they make it there. So that'd be cool for me. You see any potential upsets from the bracket at first glance or anybody you're excited to see play during the tournament? I want to see what Caitlin does. I mean, she's been dynamic, exciting. She's She has that dog in her, and I just want to see how it translates into the tournament. And so seeing that game against Stanford, that'll really, that'll really show what she's made of, also kind of what Stanford's made of. Like, you're playing against top five player in the country who is, like, electric, and I want to see, I want to see what she does, and I want to see how Stanford – guards her so that's the matchup i'm probably most looking forward to if hopefully iowa gets there yeah I mean, iowa got upset early last year so caitlin yeah, caitlin's got true. a little bit of turny turny she stuff needs, to she prove. needs more help caitlin i'm excited to see your girl cameron brink though mo i think like the jump the leap she's made this year um because nobody really thought about her as an offensive threat until this season she's really like coming to her own on the offense and her defense is even better so i'm, I'm excited to see her in the tournament yeah cameron has really like coming to herself this year, just breaking records. I think she leads Stanford in all-time blocks now as a junior. I was about to say, um, she's got a whole other year. <laughs> yeah, Maybe and two. she still has another Maybe year. Two. She can handle, I think she hasn't really shown her full array or everything that she has in her ar- arsenal right now because she is a baller. She can hoop, she can shoot, she can dribble, you know, and then defense is so big, like somebody's coming into the paint, you're going to have to get through Cameron, um, and that's tough for a lot of players to do. Yeah, no, I'm excited. All right, yes, before we let good. you go, your Duke Blue Devils back in the tournament, like you, like you said, your progression went from Final Four or bust. I mean, championship or bust, Final Four or bust, Elite Eight or bust, to just getting the fucking tournament or bust. So, <laughs> um, talk about what Kara's done with Duke. What you expect out of out of your squad in the tournament? Yeah, so you know, Duke women's basketball has had a tradition of just excellence and the expectation the tournament was just like duh we're making it to the tournament but like all programs they go through lulls and duke had a few down years but Kara taking over has been great for the program i see i see it promising you know we haven't been to the tournament since 2018 um so it's been a few years and i think you know a three c to go from not being raked to start the season so forget that to be, being able to produce and, and land um, where we where we landed and we're hosting, which is always an advantage um, for the first two rounds. I think the sky's the limit. Will we win a championship? Um, I don't know if we're there yet, <laughs> but I do think um, it's, it's big to say that like we're back and I feel like Duke women's basketball is um, working their way back to being a household name and a powerhouse um, in women's basketball. No, I agree. I mean, yeah. we've talked about it before offline. Just Duke women's basketball was it was the pinnacle. You that's where mm-hmm. you know. So it's it's for the game. I'm excited that they're back in the conversation because it was sad to see to see that 
decline, but as yeah, always, it, it was those terms, like NIT. I hate that people talk so bad about the NIT because you know some for some schools like the NIT is a is a an accomplishment. I think just playing sports, being a collegiate athlete, is an accomplishment in itself, whether you win or not. And so it's like when you establish these tra- traditions, um, and you talk about like say like UNC men they didn't even make the tournament but they started the season as the number one seed in the country Crazy. and i don't think Unreal. that has ever happened i can't say that i'm sad for them but <laughs> <laughs> it's just kind of like i don't know i think we should celebrate the success of all of these athletes just being out there doing what they love and having a good time and it's just icing on the cake when you can win i agree with that but like you said there are some There's teams that nit like that is a huge accomplishment but when you're talking a duke a Carolina, a Maryland, like these teams that have historically for the past 10 plus years for Duke Carolina, 20 plus years. Yeah. Been super good. And I T that's not to be clear. Yeah, not, no, to, it's not, not to be clear. Not to be clear Marissa, Marissa was not showing up that's to an NIT. The, the standard. I would, <laughs> if it came I to it, she said she wasn't coming. I wouldn't, I would have sat in coach B's <laughs> office and said, can we decline this offer? Like <laughs> that's not the standard for Maryland. Mm-hmm. But to, but to your decline. point, but then I look at it at, in the flip side, and I remember the year after I graduated, at KT and I graduated, they didn't make the tournament. Um, or was it two? Yeah, the thing was the year right after. And I remember like listening to the press conference and stuff because they were definitely on the bubble. And the message that Coach B was like sharing was there's just an opportunity to play more basketball. We have seniors on this team that may not ever get to play again. So, like, this is for them. So, when I when I look at like that, like, it makes sense. It's just like, Dang. <laughs> I know. It's just like, uh, it's I don't just, expect my school just like, to be couldn't be me. I feel, like, <laughs> yeah. I feel like if that's what you make, if that's where you end your season, then that's where you need to go. And if you don't want to play in NIT, then be better. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Mo, we appreciate you. Go Terps. You're the best. All right, thanks for having me, guys. Peace I'll see out. you in the lobby when I come home. Yeah, you got to come, come back to the lobby. Come hang. Peace out. See ya.